There are massive changes to X-Factor cards in Hockey Ultimate Team in NHL 25, and I'm going to break down everything you need to know. Let's start with the types of X-Factor cards in NHL 25. At launch, there are 13 total X-Factor cards in the game, broken down into three different types. At the bottom, you have eight base Series 1 X-Factor card items. These players, while considered X-Factors and have abilities, do not upgrade throughout the year. The second type of X-Factor card are what's called the Captain's Series X-Factor cards. These four players at launch will unlock upgrade tiers throughout the year as higher rated cards of that same player item are released or exactly how the prior X-Factors in NHL 22, 3, and 4 have worked. And finally, we have the Charged series of X-Factors, starting first in Series 1 with Connor McDavid. These cards receive new animated card art, will upgrade throughout the year, upgrade tiers will unlock as new Connor McDavid cards are released, and it appears that their X-Factor abilities are able to be activated at no cost. Yeah, zero points for their X-Factor abilities on that Connor McDavid. So let's start off by taking a look at our eight base Series 1 X-Factor items. Again, these are not upgradable throughout the year. Coming in first is the 83 Nico Heischer at 6'1", 175. He does have two-way forward, which is pretty useful on a centerman as it does help out with his face-off rating. He's got decent skating at 87 speed, 86 acceleration, and 87 agility. His shot is in the mid-80s, as are his hand stats, and his body checking is a little bit lackluster at 79. He does come with Silverborn Leader, which at launch of the game is pretty impactful, as he will receive a big boost of energy to everyone on your line after you score a goal with the Heischer or smaller energy boost when you get big hits or block shots. Early on at the start of NHL, anyone with 80 and above faceoff rating is actually pretty useful, and Nico Heischer is usually a pretty solid card. Now next up, we've got the 83 Elias Pettersson at 6'2", 176. The left-handed centerman has playmaking forward as well as silver 1T. He's got 86 speed, acceleration, and 88 agility if you are able to access playmaking forward. A good shot in the mid-80s, and stats in the high 80s. Very weak body checking at 76 overall and defensive awareness and face-offs at 81 respectively. Now, Elias Pettersson cards, I have always struggled with personally, just simply because while he is 6'2", he's only 176 and he always gets knocked off the puck pretty easily. However, with 1T's clearly being a focal point in NHL 25, Silver 1T is going to be a pretty impactful ability. I could see Elias Pettersson being a pretty good option for you. Next up, from the St. Louis Blues, we've got the 83 Robert Thomas at 6 foot 207, playmaking forward and silver third eye. Third eye is one of the most useless abilities in the game, and he's only got 85 speed and acceleration. Now, because of the massive reduction in attributes across the board in NHL, 85 speed and acceleration is not brutal, but it isn't great. He's got low shot attributes, decent hand stats, and again, mediocre body checking, some pretty good defensive awareness at 84 overall, and 83 face-offs, which like I mentioned, is pretty impactful. From the Detroit Red Wings, we've got the 82 Lucas Raymond at 5'11", 188, playmaking forward, and silver close quarters. He's a decent skater at 87 speed, 86 acceleration, and playmaking forward can get him up to 89 agility. He's got a mid 80 shot, mid to high 80s hand stats, body checking is only at 75, and defensively he's pretty useless as well. However, it could be a pretty sneaky offensive right-handed winger for you. Close quarters did prove to be a little lackluster in NHL 24 when it was nerfed. We'll have to see how it plays in NHL 25. Cole Caulfield from the Montreal Canadiens at 58175. He's got sniper forward as his synergy, as well as silver make it snappy, which was one of the best abilities in the game. 89 speed and acceleration with 91 agility makes him one of the better skaters at launch, and with sniper forward activated, he's got a very good shot, as well as some good hand stats to go with it. Obviously, defensively, he's a complete liability, but early on, smaller forwards are very usable. 
I have a feeling we are going to see a lot of Cole Caulfield X-Factor cards at launch, and I think he's going to be pretty deadly offensively. From my San Jose Sharks, we've got the 82 Mario Ferraro with defensive defenseman, which does get his body checking up to 87 and defensive awareness to 86, as well as a strong stick checking stat at 88. However, he also comes with Ice Pack, which is like legitimately a brutal ability. Completely pointless in Hut, and he's only got 85 speed and 84 acceleration. His shot is abysmal. Hand stats are even worse. Love Mario Ferraro as a player. Real heart and soul guy. Gotta say, would have loved William Eklund here. From the Calgary Flames, we've got the 82 Mackenzie Weger at 6 foot 206. A right-handed defenseman has two-way defenseman, which is one of the better synergies in the game. He also comes with silver shutdown, which is still one of the strongest abilities in the game. At 84 speed, 83 acceleration, 85 agility, however, he is on the slower side. His shot is real rough, even with the massive boost to one-timers from the point. So offensively, he is going to be pretty rough for you. However, shutdown and his defensive attributes do make him kind of interesting for your initial team. And lastly, we've got the European Marcel Nobels at 63205. The German forward comes with playmaking forward and silver tape to tape, which again is not really a strong impactful ability and only 81 speed to go with 80 acceleration, which is awful. Does have 90 agility, however, with playmaking forward activated. His shot is okay. Hand stats are extremely odd, especially 77 deking, body checking 75. This is more of a recognition card. Now, these eight Series 1 X-Factor player items are going to be needed if you are looking to acquire the Captain X-Factor player items or eventually the supercharged Connor McDavid. It will require you to trade in all eight of these base X-Factors to earn an X-Factor Series Series 1 Captain's Choice Pack, where you will get to select one of the four Captains in Series 1. Now, these Captain cards are upgradable throughout the year, so keep that in mind. Starting off, the first four Captain X-Factor cards we get with Series 1. We have the Toronto Maple Leafs' William Nylander at 6'202", coming in at 83 overall. He's got 90 speed, 90 acceleration, and 88 agility. A good shot in the mid-80s. Good hand stats with 88 deking. But the real highlight here is that he's got gold elite edges, which is one of the best abilities in the game. Definitely one of the most impactful cards that you can earn at launch of the game. And like I mentioned, he is upgradable. At launch, all you can do is get to tier 2, which will require 15,000 coins or one X-Factor token. But as more William Nylander cards come out throughout the year, the further tiers will unlock. It will cost more X-Factor tokens and so on and so forth like prior years of X-Factor cards. Now remember that you can refund either the coins or X-Factor tokens, you will get half of the value back. So if you were to buy the tier two, it would cost you 15,000 coins. If you refunded that, you would get 7,500 coins back. But since you can't half an X-Factor token, you can essentially rent the upgrade if you were to use one of your X-Factor tokens here on William Nylander. And then if you changed your mind and wanted to invest somewhere else, you could just refund that and get the full X-Factor token back. Anytime that requires more, like two and above, you will receive half of it back. Now, how do you acquire X-Factor tokens? Well, in the X-Factor sets, you will find X-Factor token sets, and this will work a lot like power-up collectibles or other event collectibles have in years past. It does look like power-up collectibles are just a thing of the past, and X-Factors will only be upgraded with these tokens. To acquire one X-Factor token, you can trade in 40, 72 and above player items. And again, the overalls are pretty jarring because in NHL 25, they have drastically reduced overalls across the board. So in prior games, this first set for whatever event or collectible you were working towards required 40, 74 and above gold items. Now it's just 72 and above player items will net you one token. And again, as the higher overall cards are required, you will earn more tokens for 580 and above overall player items, you will earn five X-Factor tokens. So again, the cost is drastically different than it was in years past. The next Captain X-Factor in Series 1 is the 6'2 Miro Heiskanen. He does come with two-way defenseman. The left-handed D-man also has gold elite edges to go along with 87 speed, 85 acceleration, and agility, which gives him a unique blend of size and speed on the back end that you don't really see early on in the game. His shot is pretty low in the low 80s. His hand stats are in the mid-80s. Body checking is only 78, but with 
Two-way defenseman activated. His defensive awareness can get up to 89. It is the most important defensive attribute in the game as defensive awareness dictates how well your players intercept passes. So a very strong option here. And again, much like William Nylander, you can invest one X-Factor token and get him up to 84 overall once you acquire him. Adam Fox is up next. 5'11", 185, the right-handed offensive defenseman. Comes with offensive defenseman to help out that slap shot. He's also got gold seeing eye, which is more of a fun ability, more than one that you can really rely on all the time on the back end. He does have 90 speed and acceleration to go with 89 agility, making him one of the fastest players in the game. Great hand stats with 89 deking and offensive awareness, as well as 90 passing, 77 body checking, and his defensive awareness is at 83, so obviously a more offensive defenseman. His jump to 84 does tick over to get him to 91 speed in Excel, which again just makes him one of the fastest cards in the game. And our last Captain X-Factor player is the 84, Nikita Kucherov. At 88 speed, acceleration and agility. Again, he's a great skater. Does come with sniper forward to improve that wrist shot, get his accuracy up over 90. His hand stats are all great. Deking and offensive awareness, touch 90. His body checking is abysmal at 73, but you're using Nikita Kucherov for the offensive side of things. He's also got gold 1T, which looks to be one of the best abilities in the game, especially with skill-based one-timers being such an effective way to score in NHL 25. As you'll You'll notice you can get him up to 85 for only one X Factor token. Again, you can refund that for free and get the full token back. Now, once you acquire all four of the Series 1 Captain X Factor items, you can trade them in for the new charged X Factor Series 1 Connor McDavid. Easily the best card in the game at launch. Six foot one, 194. The left handed centerman's got playmaking forward to help boost his agility up over 90 to 91 but he's also got 92 speed and 92 acceleration to go with some of the best hands in the game and he's got gold wheels but if you happen to notice he gets gold wheels for free that's right it does not cost any ability points to activate meaning this supercharged Connor mcdavid is going to just get gold wheels and it won't go towards your ap limit now to get up to 86 it will cost you two x factor tokens but this is one of the safest cards to invest in and that'll actually get his speed up to 93 to match his acceleration as well at 93. This is clearly the holy grail chase at launch of the game. Just an absolutely ridiculous card, especially when you consider the fact that his gold ability, which used to cost 10 ability points, is now zero. Now, obviously, as you can see, this is going to be an extremely long chase, especially if you are someone that does not spend money in the game. But one of the newest things added to NHL 25 are B&D cards, which if you play other EA games like NCAA or Madden, these are account bound. So when you complete this X Factor McDavid set, it will cost you these four Captain X Factors. And in prior years, you would have lost them all. However, you will get two of them back that will be account bound. Now, account bound cards cannot be traded in in other sets, but you can play with these cards. So while you won't be able to use them for future trade-ins, at least when you trade in these four captain cards, you will be able to get two back and actually use them in your lineup as well as the charged Connor McDavid. However, since it costs all eight of the base Series 1 X-Factor items to get one captain card, you are going to have to earn 32 of these to get Connor McDavid. Now I'll touch on how to actually earn any of the X-Factor items at launch, but one of the main ways will be by doing the Series 1 base X-Factor player pack. This will require 38, 75 and above player items. Again, to do some quick math, just to put the value on the charged Connor McDavid, it would require 304, 75 and above player items to make one of the captain cards. You need to make all four. That's 1,216, 75 overall and above player items to finish that set off. Here is what I would recommend if you are a no money spent player. I would not trade in any 77 and above NHL 
sell player items because those are necessary for team builder sets. And if you want to learn more about team builders, I have a whole separate video covering all of that in NHL 25. You can check that out. So I would slowly work towards just getting as many 75 and above items to work towards this trade-in set. Now for science, I'm just going to show you what this set looks like and we'll cash in enough cards to get an X Factor player pack. And as you can see, we can go through and open up the entire pack as it includes all of the base X Factor items. So go ahead and select whatever X Factor you want. And as you can see, there is no cooldown on this set. So there is no rush like there was in years past because there was a monthly cooldown. You can do this set as many times as you want to get as many X Factors as you need to work towards getting the charged Connor McDavid. Now you also have the X Factor Series 1 reroll. So if you end up packing any of the X Factors that you've already got and you've got some duplicates, you can go ahead and throw three of them in here and you will get a reroll and choose whatever one that you need as you slowly work towards getting your Connor McDavid. Now now, when it comes to earning free X Factor packs at launch of the game, there are three ways to do so. Number one is your starter pack. When you start your team in Hockey Ultimate Team, you will get a random base Series 1 X Factor item. Everyone gets that. It's completely random. And because they're all the same value, you don't need to worry if you don't get the one you want. So you don't need to worry about resetting your account or anything like that. X Factor pack number two comes in the wild card mode. In the early access of Hockey Ultimate Team, getting 2,000 wild card climb points and completing the wild card path, you will get a X Factor Series 1 player choice pack. Again, it will be one of the eight. And then lastly, in Hut Moments, there are 13 X Factor moments that you can complete, one for every X Factor player in the game currently. And as you can see, as you work down through the X Factor Series 1 moments, you will earn various amounts of cards and coins. But at the end, by completing the McDavid moment on All Star, which is a welcome change because it does not appear that there are any superstar moments in this X Factor moments path, you will unlock a X Factor Series 1 player choice pack, as well as a token that can be used on any of the Captain X Factors or the Charged McDavid. So totaling three free X Factor player items that you can get at launch of the game. Now, my personal opinion when it comes to the changes to the X Factors, a little confused as to why there are different types of X Factor cards. I think that in NHL 24, when every franchise had a player that was represented and could be used on your team pretty much throughout the year, it helped out a lot of the players that make theme teams or follow teams that aren't going to receive a lot of players that have a ton of upgrades, like the San Jose Sharks, for example. However, now you have some of the most sought after players and cards in the game, like Cole Caulfield, and his X Factor is just locked at 82 overall. To be honest, I would have been completely okay with X Factor cards just remaining the same as in prior years. However, we just finally got customizable abilities, meaning that when a new card came out that had an X Factor card, if that Team of the Week or Live Moments card had a different gold X Factor ability, if you had the X Factor card, you would just gain that new ability and you could pick and choose which one you wanted. This also is going to have some pretty big implications in Team of the Year and Team of the Season, because are these cards going to receive trade-ins? When are we going to receive the next series of X Factor drops. There was only 12 teams represented in that first drop with one European player, so over half the league and their fans aren't getting an X Factor card. Again, it's way too early to draw any conclusions, just the things that I thought about first when I saw the changes to X Factors. Lastly, that chase for McDavid, well, that is the holy grail card like I mentioned, and it should be. I am glad that it is actually obtainable. However, after seeing the lackluster amount of rewards in the XP path and the dramatic change to how we receive rewards in NHL 25, I'm left with the feeling that players that don't spend money are just going to have a borderline impossible time trying to get the top tier content in the game. Again, way too early to draw any conclusions. We'll see how it plays out. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I'll see you next time.